about Jesus. Amen. Now, the Europeans took this. Yeah. Images. Oh, I'm going to hit hard. Oh, yeah. Bell prophets. Bell prophets. Took this mm -hmm. and made it look like them. Yeah. 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 And then used scripture. Right. Mm. That's right. Servants mm. obey your masters. masters. That's right. And taking that scripture, they manipulated and made themselves that master that the Bible was talking about. That's right. So if you want to talk about terrorism, racism is terrorism. Amen. If you got me looking up to white people Go ahead. to think they are superior and look down at myself as a black man to teach me that I'm inferior, that is terrorism. terrorism. Yeah. So what Satan, what Satan preachers done? They made it, see, it don't matter what color God is. Because we don't know. They made it. See, it don't matter what color God is. Because we don't know. It don't matter what color God is. Because we don't know. Took this mm -hmm. and made it look like them. They made it. See, it don't matter what color God is. Because we don't know. But if I got a different agenda. Yeah. And I see that you are religious. Yeah. I got to manipulate religion yeah. to see what I can get out of you. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, you fellow believers of this ministry, and shalom to the elect. So anyway, I ran across this video with um, his title is Pastor Gino Jennings. And um, there's a couple of things he said that I want to read some scriptures on. But um, first, um, this pastor reminds me of a mixture of Louis Farrakhan, a mixture of being a Hebrew Israelite, and a mixture of a, a top pastor, you know, of the of a mega church. So he's got, you know, he's managed to connect various forms of personalities to, um, you know, make this high level Im image of a great preacher, which preacher means prophet. And obviously he's not a prophet because he doesn't prophesy anything. He's just really a great motivational speaker. And then there's things that, we teach that obviously he learned, you know, over the years. Uh, but when it, you know, like the women supposed to be silenced in the churches, they supposed to be in head coverings and modest apparel. He understands all that because that came from being a Hebrew Israelite slash Islam, right? So, um, a couple of things he said with that Jesus, nobody knows what he looked like. His name is not Jesus, by the way. But then he says the Europeans is the one that repainted him, but here we go again, you know, every time you think of somebody white or Europe, you think of somebody white, you know, they're not the original Europeans, right? When you see the word Greek, everybody think it's just white people. And this is what racism has even, you know, indoctrinated us, or let me say Christians, even people who are against white supremacy, they don't understand because they don't know history, right? These people who did this were Edomites from Petra Mountains, Caucasus Mountains, you know? That's who these people are that went around the world, raped, robbed, and destroyed it, and then set, you know, in, 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 in fact, they're the ones who took down Europe. 
you know, the the uh, the Moors, uh, which was so-called black people, Israelites, during the time of the late 1300s. And then they came into power. And then they did it, right? So they're not the original, okay, Europeans. Let's, let's get that straight. So we're going to go into a couple of Bible verses. You know, he said racist, um, speaks of racism and it's terrorism. Well, God was a terrorist then, right? Leviticus 20 and 26. He says, you are a holy people, a special people unto me. And I have severed you from other people that ye should be mine. But then he told the other, the, the tell the heathen, eat the garbage. You know, you're not supposed to do that. So, you know, Amos 3 and 1, Acts 5 and 29, there's various scriptures that show that God is a racist. Luke 1 and 68. But they'll keep the Jew and Greek thing. We done broke that down a hundred times. When it says Jew and Greek, that doesn't all mean Greek. It was a multitude of nations. In fact, Acts 6 and 1, the Grecians were Hellenistic Jews. They were Israelites. So you had practicing Jews who knew they was Israelites and some who wasn't. And then you have some who didn't believe in the Messiah. If you don't believe in the Messiah, you know, that's damnation to you. Because you can say, hey, I believe in Yahweh, but you don't believe in the Son. You see? So that's what we're trying to preach. So anyway, let's go to Revelation 1. That's why we know this man is not a prophet. Uh, well, first go, let's, let's go to 1 John. 1 John 4 and 2. It says, Hereby know ye that the Spirit of God, Yahweh, every spirit that confesseth that Yahweh Shah says Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. So we know that he came in the flesh. So why would this man say we wouldn't know what he looked like? Now, according to history, the Lord is the one that allowed these images to go up, right? The Lord is the one that caused these terrorist acts. So the Lord is the one that's going to have us wake up to the understanding of what he looks like. Right? This is why the image is in there. For the simple fact that Everybody at that time, most of the Israelites at that time, let me say the Israelites at that time, already were so-called black. So why did they say he was black? Because of the unique comp complexion. Not black, but so-called. Because he had a beautiful, dark, glowing complexion. Right? The Lord sent his son very melanated. Okay? Not looking like a Hamite. <laughs> okay? So anyway, um... It says um, that he's coming in the flesh, right? So we're going to go to John 14 and 9. It says, uh, Yahweh Shah said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? With a question mark. And that have seen me, have seen the Father. And how saith Thou then shew us the Father with a question mark. So, we're going to go into this situation. Uh, Galatians 5 and 9. Now, I don't understand why these, I don't know, maybe it's Geno Jennings' practice where he get these two Jakes to stand there holding these big signs with their legs showing at the bottom. <laughs> I don't know that. I don't, when they couldn't get a poster board and put the pictures on there. I don't know. That's some weird looking stuff to me, man. You know, these two Jakes sitting there standing the whole time holding up the image of Jesus, white Jesus. Because that's who that is. That's not the Messiah. That is a white Jesus. Jesus is not the true name of the Heavenly Father. That's why it talks about whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We can't say Jesus. Right? Right? Uh, let's go to a couple of translations. Let's go to Revelations 1 and 15 first. 1 and 2. Um, or 1 and 1. Um, the revelation of Yahweh which God gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he, he sent and signified it by the angel unto his servant John who bear record of the word of Yahweh and of the testimony of Yahweh Shai, right? And of all things that he saw, right? All things that he saw. So that's making that clear. So 
we all know what Revelation 1 and 15 say. We'll read it again. And this is for you new brothers and some of these sisters who are coming in who don't know. They'll say, oh, the color of Jesus doesn't matter. So if it doesn't matter, why did he put that image up? And why wasn't they saying that didn't matter when we was worshiping that? And would they have to know the, uh, uh, kind of like the original images before they put that up? And then when you go into the Russian icons and other history texts, you'll see that everybody in that region or that means say at that time that was biblical, holy, they was melanated people, right? To very light to very dark. Different shades of brown, right? So why did they put that up? Why wouldn't they? They want to set themselves up under white supremacy. So I can't understand. You know, Gino Jennings, he's saying it was a terrorist act and this and that. Well, if you're going to say that this was not his image, but we don't know the image, why are you making a fuss over it? Because that's the image that people wanted to worship. You have to know the image to sit up there and and try to deny this image. The only way to deny this image is to know that he looked like somebody else. If you're not, if you're not acknowledging that he looked so-called black or like somebody else, you can't deny that image. But the Bible says it, right? So this is Geno Jennings' skit. He's he's trying to do kind of come away from being racist, but he's trying to stay with that black thing, right? Anyway, 1 and 15, and his feet like unto fine brass as they burn in a furnace. We're going to stop there. Uh, his head uh, and his hairs were white like wool. And so they'll go to the translations later because you got to understand the old English translations. And then, you know, when the translators came, obviously racist translators don't want to say he had real woolly hair. Right? They don't want to say he had dark toned skin. But when you look up that word, um, ruddy, it means a dark, beautiful complexion. It really does. You just got to look it up on the right sources. So anyway, we're going to go to the Julia Smith Bible. I don't know when this Bible was, maybe the 1600s, 1700s, 1876. Right around the time they was showing up, snatching verses out and giving us the Bible and telling us we couldn't read. I'm sure this was still there. And that's why they told us we couldn't read, right? Uh, 1 and 15. And his feet is as of Lebanon. When you look at Lebanon, when you look this up, because I actually looked it up, it's talking about the Lebanon tree. The Lebanon tree is a very, very dark brown. And a, like a shiny, dark, beautiful complexion, right? It says the brass of Lebanon and refined by fire in a furnace. Refine. All right, let's go to the Wycliffe, one of my favorite versions here. John Wycliffe. That's why they tried to kill him, by the way. 1382. They have him up here looking as a white man, but he was probably a Jake, right? Um, 1 and 15, it says, uh, and his feet like unto lantern. Let me go up here. His head, him in his hairs, were white as white wool and snow, right? So when you go back, because the Christians will say, oh, see, you're flipping it on and off in, in allegory. When you go back to the, the original text, one word can change everything, right? It says, and his feet like unto fine brass. In the, the old text, it says, as fine brass. We know his feet wasn't fine brass but it was likened as fine brass. And when you look up fine brass, brass, they show you as gold, bright gold. That's bull crap, right? But the original brass and fine brass is refined brass, which is very dark. When you refine almost anything, it becomes dark, right? As if they burned in a furnace. So they're telling you this. It burned in a furnace. It's not saying they were burning in an actual furnace but as they were burning in a furnace. His head and his hairs were white like unto wool. In the old text it was says as wool or likened unto wool. No, his hair wasn't wool, but it was likened unto wool. And his sound, his voice was the sounds of many waters. No, his voice wasn't many waters, but it was the sounds of many waters. You know, to get that straight. So we go back here 
It says, his feet like unto lantern. When you look at lantern, it's very dark. I actually looked this up. As if they brinage, as it, this is what it says, as in a brinage chimney, as in a burn chimney. How do you get around that? A burn, a brinage chimney? Wow. And a voice of his voice of waters. So it goes up and say, his head and him, his head were white as wool, as snow. Now we go to the other translation. It says the head on his hair and the head, I mean the hair on his head and the hair on his face was white like wool. But, you know, through trickery in Christianity and racism, even in Christianity, they'll say, uh, well, wait a minute, how is his face going to be white and his feet black? You see how you will do whatever you can to keep your doctrine? That's what they say. But nobody's face is white and nobody's feet is actually black. So it's, to, to, it's, it's telling you the color. Why would, his hair, why would his hair be white? First of all, when you go to Numbers, uh, the story of Miriam, I believe the 11th chapter, uh, when Miriam was turned leprous white as snow, why would the Lord said his son be leprous white as snow you see racism is so sickening that they turn their terminology white into something great and pure and beautiful that's why they call themselves white but they never really was white they were red you don't never see a white person right anyway but if you've never seen one and then you've seen a black person all of a sudden turn pale like that, you would. What would you call them? You would call them actually white. That's to keep that racism going, man. Just like with the Jew and the Greek, right? Everybody think Greeks were white, but you go do the research now. The scholars are even saying that we've been saying at Great Millstone, starting with Elder Apostle Taha, that the Greeks. Let me say that Greeks could have been um, different nations as well, not just Israelites. They could have been other nations. Hey, Paul called himself a Roman, and he was an Israelite. He was a Roman citizen. But we know now that Cornelius and the centurion, right, the captain of, of 100, it was in Capernaum. Or Capernaum, however you want to uh, pronounce it. Right, right there with the Israelites in Jerusalem. So anyway, I just wanted to touch on that real quick. We, we know what the Messiah looked like. John the Revelator gave it to us. That's why this man don't understand the scriptures. That's all I have on that. Shalom.